Hi there, I'm Rue. Welcome to my video. It's almost Halloween, you guys, but first, I have some generic non-spooky stories for you guys, but next week, <laughs> Halloween full on. This week's stories are Karen International, Barn Burn, and Parkour Parking. Before we get started, though, I want to do a shout out to the fabulous commenter, Jordan Haynes. If you need a better insult than genitalia, call people damp socks. You know, I think I might just adopt that. For anyone who feels clueless right now, it's because I've made comments before where I just genuinely feel like using genitalia as a negative term, like an insult, it's just rude to beautiful body parts. So damp socks it is. Thank you, Jordan. Without further ado, let's get started. Karen International. Yes, we have a Karen come to the information desk. It is time for Karen to come to the information desk. Seriously, Karen, come to the information desk. Another international Karen. Ooh, goody. Karen threatens to report me to the school for not chaperoning a school trip my son wasn't going on? Context. I'm from Switzerland, and I currently live in the German-speaking part of Switzerland. I was raised trilingual English, French, and German because my dad comes from the UK, my mom comes from Geneva, a French-speaking canton, and I was raised in Zurich, which speaks German. I'm already impressed. Like, I had a couple of languages in school, but yeah, I'm still clinging on to my Duolingo, hoping that one day I will also be trilingual. I decided to raise my son trilingual as well, and my sister and her kids live in a French-speaking part of Switzerland, which means that he had plenty of chances to practice his French. Swiss schools are required to teach all kids English, and at least one other language of Switzerland other than their native language. Since my son already spoke fluent French, he decided to take Italian like I did at his age, instead of wasting time learning a language he was already fluent in. This year, there were school trips to the country where your language was spoken. French learners went to France. Italian learners went to Italy. Romange learners were the only group who didn't leave Switzerland. Anyway, on to the story at hand. I was picking up my son from school and was talking to some of the other parents in the schoolyard when Karen appeared. I don't really talk to her very often. She usually hangs around the other side of the schoolyard. And our children know each other, but aren't really friends. The following conversation ensues. Will you be coming on the France trip in a few weeks? Uh, no, I have work that week, and my son is in the Italian class, so I'm gonna chaperone the Italy trip. Why don't you want to supervise the France trip as well? Because I have work that week? Well, I don't speak French, and I wanted to go out after the kids are asleep, so I was hoping you would come so you could translate things for me. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. You probably shouldn't be chaperoning a French trip if you don't speak French. And you really shouldn't be drinking? I mean, seriously. I thought the whole point of adult chaperones was so they could get kids out of situations they couldn't get themselves out of? How could they do that if they didn't speak the language of the country they were in and they were shit-faced on wine? It's a France trip, you gotta drink wine! What's on a France trip that doesn't have wine in it? Um, one for children? I think Karen got the message because she sort of drifted off. It wasn't too abrupt, so it didn't appear rude or anything, but she didn't stick around for long after that. The next day was a Friday, so my son had his best friend round to play some video games after school. And my son's friend told me that she freaked out. She and my son's friend's mom are really good friends, and she came over after school that day, fuming that I wouldn't be her personal translator for the weekend, while she got drunk, talking about reporting me to the school for being so disrespectful. I assume she means the one for children comment, but it's a Karen. She might just mean me not helping her. What she thought the school was going to do is beyond me. I thought about telling the school. There were three witnesses. But then my son's friend told me that his parents had already done it. 
Apparently, they were horrified that someone who was going to be watching their son would be drinking on the job. And they reported it the very next morning. Apparently, she'd told the school that she spoke perfect French to get on the trip. She's no longer chaperoning the trip, and all those kids are safer for it. Wow. Um, I would just like to say... I think she has an alcohol problem. Like, you have to be pretty miserable in your life to be like, my kid is going to France and I'ma get on that trip because, you know, wine. That is just so sad. Barn burn. Entitled mother tells me to get out of my barn. This isn't really much of an entitled parent and more of an entitled pet parent, which I've found to be almost worse than regular entitled parents. So I have a barn and there's plenty of space so some people board their horses at my barn. Anyway, I was out there one day with my horse and wanted to ride in the indoor arena because it was super hot out and the dusty outdoor arena didn't sound very pleasant at the time. Besides, there were already some people riding outside. I went in the barn to tack up my horse and all was going well, until I got my saddle out and was cinching it up. One of the boarders approached me. Cast, me, entitled pet mother, and nice boarder. Can you please take your horse outside? My horse is relaxing right now and he doesn't like other horses. Uh, what do you mean? I look up and see her horse is loose in the arena, rolling around in the dirt and whatnot. Honestly, just being a horse. Well, I rode him earlier and he needs to relax. Ma'am, on the rule board it says that horses can't be loose in the barn when there's other riders in the area. There's a round pen for that. We usually use the round pen for warming horses up or trading foals, but it's way too small to ride in, which is why we let people let their horses loose in there. But <laughs> It's so hot outside, and my poor baby can't handle that. Besides, everyone else is riding outside. Well, I don't allow horses to be loose in the indoor arena, so I would like you to either put your horse away or move it to the round pen. I don't make exceptions. Absolutely not. It's 90 degrees outside, and my baby can't handle that. Miss, it's just as hot in here as it is out there in the shade. Please, move your horse. I would like to ride my horse in my barn that I own. Why can't you ride outside? Me in the same whiny tone as her. It's 90 degrees outside. My poor baby can't handle that. And then in a normal tone, it's my barn and I would like to ride here while following the rules. So please, if you don't move your horse, I'm going to have to do it for you. I honestly don't know what set her off, but she got all flustered and started ripping the tack off my horse. I pay to ride here. I can do what I want with my baby. Me getting pretty frustrated at this point. Ma'am, please don't do that. This tack is expensive. Not unless you let my horse relax in here where it's cool. I love horses just as much as anybody, but it's just a horse and they don't care if they're inside or outside. Now please move your horse. No, it's too hot out there. It's abuse. It's abuse. It's too hot. You have to take your horse outside now. I pay to be here and I can do what I want. At this point, I'm really pissed off. So I retack my horse and tie her up out front, grab a halter and go in to take her horse out of the barn. She was super mad and tried to hit me. But there were other people in there who were just finishing riding. Help! This lady is taking my horse! Um, she owns the place? She's not taking your horse. I could hear your banter from outside. They held her back while I moved her horse back to its stall. I handed her a new rules pamphlet and told her I expected her to have found a new barn by the end of the month. I honestly don't care that I lost a client since she was a blub and I don't want that environment in my barn. Wow. 
here's the thing if she wants to have like full reign of a barn then she should own her own barn i don't agree with horses don't care if it's cool or hot because i'm an animal lover and no but yeah girl if it's not your barn you do not get to set the rules the fact that she starts attacking your horse basically like ripping off its equipment is just <sighs> alarming <laughs> oh my god I bet you her horse would have loved the fresh air though. So if it's equally as hot outside as it is inside, then I'm not a horse, but I would prefer being outside in the fresh air and the breeze or whatever. Parkour parking. Family parks in our driveway and wants to sue us because we towed their car. My family lives two minutes away from a very nice little Chinese restaurant. It's quite popular, but got limited parking and visitors always have to park a few minutes away. Around 10 minutes away is a good spot, and that's even advertised by the restaurant. A few weeks ago, a family apparently thought the 10 minutes by foot are way too much, and decided to park in our driveway, directly in front of our garage. Don't get me wrong, you definitely can't mistake our driveway for a normal parking space. We have flowers and a small tree surrounding it, like a small front yard. Anyway, we don't really know when they arrived, but when my mom came home at 7pm, the car was already there. She parked on the side of the road and went inside, thinking we had guests. When neither my dad nor me had anyone over, my parents asked all four immediate neighbors, and when no one knew whose car it was, we waited for an hour and called the towing service. It was 9pm by then. They came and took the car away. At around 11pm, someone rang at our door. Who would have guessed? It was the family who owned the car! A mom, a dad, and two brats. When my dad opened, already pissed because it was late, they started to scream in his face. Where is our car? We parked it here and went to the restaurant? Why is it gone? This got my mom's and my attention too. My dad wanted to stay calm and told them that this was our private property and they illegally parked there and that we got their car towed. After they heard that, the parents completely freaked out. The screaming and name-calling that followed made their kids cry and my dad closed the door on them. We then went on with our evening. An hour later, let me remind you that it was about 12 a.m. by now, the doorbell rang again. My mom already went to bed and me and my dad were in our pajamas. We both went up to the door. The police stood in front of us. They told us that the family that stood behind them and had waited an hour in front of our house accused us of having totaled their car and ignored them. We told them what happened and after they didn't see a totaled car anywhere and we were in our house, they believed us pretty quick. The officers told us they were sorry and left with the family in tow. After that, nothing really happened. Until we got a bill in the mail. They seriously, sent us their bill from the towing and demanded us pay it or else they would sue us. My parents consulted a lawyer and he told us to just ignore it. They can't do anything. After that, we didn't hear from them again. <laughs> Thanks for reading and sorry for the bad English. I'm from Germany and you might find a few mistakes. <gasps> Entitled car people are in Germany as well. And here I thought that everyone in Germany was just so organized and efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely following all of the traffic rules. <sighs> I love the fact that they were like, well, first of all, they totaled our car. And second of all, they ignored us. How dare they? That's all I have for you guys this time. Do stop by next Friday. Halloween is upon us. It's not just like one day. It's a whole month. Oh, yes. You know you're serious about your Halloween when you have a whole month. <laughs> Some people have birthday weeks. I have Halloween months. <laughs> if I had it my way, it would always be Halloween. So yeah, subscribe. Speaking of Halloween, if you have any spooky stories you want me to read, now would be the time to submit it on my website. Link in the description. Also, if you want to see my adorable fur babies, follow me on Instagram. 
I've decided not to be so paranoid in life and it's unhealthy, so I've decided to share more of my life. And since my babies are 99.9% .9 of my life, yes, I am a bona fide cat lady, there's a lot of cat pictures. You should check it out. They're adorable. Also, stick figure comics. <gasps> And check out my stream on Twitch, where I will be streaming my WoW Classic. I'm just gonna get my mount, so I'm level 40, and then I'm a stream. Because I feel like it doesn't really get interesting until then. So yeah, get ready. As always, thank you so much, Capra. You're the best patron ever.